What's going on guys? In this video I'm looking at the other major trade that went down last night. It's kind of funny to be calling this a major trade as it's Tanner Juneau going to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I feel like if you only looked at the right side of this trade, you would think that the Predators get Philip Forsberg or something, but no, the Tampa Bay Lightning paid all of that for Tanner Juneau. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around this one guys. Obviously Juneau is like a physical player. I feel like he's a player you want in the playoffs. At the same time, I just don't understand the value that, you know, Tampa Bay put on him there. Giving up all those picks is insane to me. I really don't think there's anything wrong with adding him to the team. As I mentioned, a good playoff player, plays physical, relatively young. Nor do I think there's anything wrong with, you know, giving up all those picks. It's just giving up all those picks for Jano that I find uh, is a bit strange to me. I feel like, look at this, EA has him as a 25-year-old, 79 overall, low top 9 left winger. That's rough. Like, that is... <laughs> I, I can't wait to see uh, what the Predators say when I want to trade for him. So, obviously, last year he had a solid season. Uh, 24 goals, 17 assists, 41 points. Uh, this year, though, has not been as good. So, obviously, time will tell how he does with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Again, I just I just do not get this one. I feel like, initially, they're giving up Cal Foot. He's like a decent young defenseman. You guys can see EA has him as a 23-year-old 80 overall with medium top six potential. He's still not like a full-time actual defenseman quite yet. He's a guy that kind of like, you know, moves in and out of the lineup. So... I feel like him on his own is about enough for Janelle, obviously former first round pick back in 2017 though. I mean, yeah, look at that. I'm not going to you know put the trade through, but you guys can see there they want foot and the trade value is about equal, maybe even a bit more on our side. So on medium difficulty, I think they would already say yes to this. And the fact that we're now going to add five draft picks is absolutely insanity. Like, and so we're just going to check here, guys, watch what happens. Uh, the first pick in this draft is 2023 fifth. Uh, they also had the fourth and third on top of that too they're doing the 2024 second and then the 2025 first i just realized that we only have five spots and we actually need six so again both trades last night they're just you know setting over a bunch of different assets so we won't even include the fifth round pick here uh in place of the 2025 first so i mean yeah <laughs> charity knows value's literally almost gone invisible like there's just this tiny tiny sliver left um i do want to see actually if they would say yes four foot one for one um, if they do, we'll just, you know, trade back for them and then send the picks over. I feel like they would say yes to this. And yeah, they do. So in game, Tampa Bay just basically gifted Nashville five picks. But like I was saying, guys, I'm going to show the real trade again just because I want to see what Nashville's GM's response is. I know in real life, like David Poyle is going to retire now as GM of the Nashville Predators, their only ever GM. And I feel like, you know, what a send off for him. Like probably the best trades ever made. Let's see here. What are they going to say? Trades accepted. I almost feel guilty saying that's this deal. I figured Nashville's making all the gangbusters. A lot of times they say this while you're fleecing them. Uh, this is one case where it, it was definitely accurate. Like, they just fleeced us big time. And after the trade, guys, who's the Tampa Lightning's lineup might look like when healthy? So you got Hagel, Point, Kutrov on the first line, Stammer, Sorelli, Krillorn on the second. So very solid top six, obviously. Third line is now Jano, Paul, Colton. So, I mean, uh, some pretty physical players there. Like, they're all, you know, six feet plus. Even the fourth line, Maroon, Bellmare, Perry, you know, they're very physical fourth line. So you can kind of Tell what Tampa Bay is doing here. Like, skill, talented top six with a physical bottom six. Again, built for the playoffs, this team. Now, the decor definitely looks a little weaker after losing Ryan McDonough to the Predators in the summer, but still not bad. Of course, uh, one of the best goalies, if not the best goalie in the world, Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, definitely could see them making another run to Stanley Cup this year, without a doubt. So, here you guys, your first look at Tampa Bay. I'm the Tampa Bay Lightning. Rock in the blue and white there. Number 84. Looks pretty solid. Now, next year, we'll try the trade from Nationals' perspective. I already have a feeling what Tampa Bay is going to say, though. <laughs> You serious? Now for this trade, guys, you can see the Lightning are interested in Juno. Unfortunately, though, foot's on the block. Third, fourth, and second is. First is on the block. So, like, we already know they're going to say no. We already know Nashville clearly wins this trade in game. Tampa Bay clearly loses it. I'm just curious to see what we have to take away for this trade to actually go through. So, obviously, we'll start off here with the main trade. They say no. Completely barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, um, they're just not having it at all. So, uh, the first is the most valuable. Try taking away that. Still trades rejected, as you'd expect. Uh, the next most value is the second, so we'll try the trade now. They're still saying no. Um, at this point, I think Cal Foot's got the most value. I am curious, like, if we just take away, say, both picks, are they fine with doing Foot for Juno? Like, maybe is that the fair trade? Because obviously, uh, the Predators said yes to this as well. They reject it, so they actually do think uh, Foot has more value. So, if you do remember, there was a fifth round pick I got rid of, so we'll try just the third, fourth, and fifth here for Juno. Trade's rejected. We'll try just a third and a fourth now. Trades rejected. Just a third round pick. That actually looks pretty fair. Trades rejected. So I think the value for Juno in game is a fourth round pick, which is one of six assets. Nope. No, sorry. Uh, they rejected the fourth for Juno. 
So literally the fifth round pick, which I didn't even use when I was doing the trade as Tampa Bay. Of the six assets Tampa Bay sent over in this trade, the fifth round pick easily had the least amount of value. And that's what they're willing to go up for Geno in games. So that's kind of crazy. Obviously, EA ratings aren't always indicative of real life. That's why I built a custom roster, which by the way, guys, is actually live. So go and download it. I'll have a video in a couple hours, but it there shows you why, you know, a custom roster is needed. Again, guys, even though it was like such a lopsided trade in real life, in game, I do understand Tampa's perspective. You're in win now mode. The picks aren't gonna help you out for five, six years when you're no longer competing for cups. The thing is, if you're giving up all those picks, I feel like you'd be getting a better player back than Tanner Janot. For instance, a team with a higher type of player. Now, for whatever reason, Janot was their guy. I feel like they should have just negotiated better and found a way to like get him for a cheaper price because that was definitely way too much. And so after the trade, guys, who look at the Predators lineup when healthy. Obviously, that first line is going to be too bad for next season. Forsberg, Johansson, Duchesne, Thomas Tino. I feel like you know, I was just going to keep getting better. Glass has the potential still, but he still doesn't have that breakout season yet. Uh, Granlin, of course, a solid top six player. Uh, without Janot, obviously, the bottom six is a lot worse. Thomas Novak, though, kind of like a diamond in the rough for the Predators. I don't know if you guys play fantasy. Pick this guy up. He's got like 11 points in his last five games. It's something crazy like that. Uh, dude just popping off. Uh, so, I mean, the Predators really have to, didn't have to give up too much there. And again, just get a haul of picks. Defensively, a lot of rumors around them potentially trading Ekholm. We'll be curious to see what they get back for him. Very solid top four defenseman. Can play a physical game. So, I feel like any team contending for a cup is going to give up at least a first round pick for him. Now, in terms of Calfoot, they've actually become scratched because I feel like in real life, um, if all their defensemen were healthy, he's probably the seventh best guy here. Now, of course, two Predators have no issues in goals. Their current starter in Saros, the top five goal in the NHL. They got Skarov in the AHL as one of the best goalie prospects. So I feel like the future is going to be pretty bright here for the Predators, even in like the post poil era. But that's going to do it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that sub button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.